and Georgia, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Ali. The first question, what's your background? I actually studied entrepreneurship at, at the university, of all things. Um, I've got uh, a bit of a wine background. My father's a winemaker, so I've grown up amongst all things wine. I was picking grapes when I was eight years old, and uh, my father then went on to have, um, start some wine retail stores, and we've moved in production and, um, and all sorts of things to do with the wine industry. So um, I applied my entrepreneurship degree with my background of wine, and that's how we come up with, um, with my business. So entrepreneurship, when you study entrepreneurship, how does it work? I mean, is it a sort of academic course or you need to do something as well? It's, um, it touches on the various aspects of required to start a business. Uh, from my perspective, it's about uh, a way of thinking and it's, it's problem solving. It's coming to work and knowing you've probably got about 15 problems that you need to solve in unconventional ways. So. Um, I, I, do, I do believe you can teach entrepreneurship. There's a few different theories there, but um, I'm definitely on the it can be taught side. And then later you come up with your company, Lupe Wine. Uh, how did it happen? What, what was the main idea behind I should actually show you the, the product first um, because right. it's a bit hard to, um, to understand without seeing it. Let me bring it up to the, the screen. Okay. Um, this this all came about when I was I was actually at a, a Melbourne festival. Australia's got a um, a big outdoor um, scene for music, um, so we were at an outdoor festival, and I I went to the bar um, and asked for a glass of wine, and they said no, you can have beer or, or spirit. Wine's too hard to serve outdoors. So I thought, well. There's something wrong there. If beer and spirits have managed to have to, to make an easy um, to serve package for the outdoors, what's you know what's holding the wine industry back? So that's where I started prototyping and having a look into into packaging uh, to the wine industry. So what we've got here is a, a PET plastic um, shatterproof glass. Um, All right. We get to make ourselves. Uh, we've got a, a foil seal that's also been made specifically for us um, that is heat sealed onto the top of the product. And to get the wine into the we had a, um, a tailor-built machine made for us. So that's the product. Um, it's got 150 ml of wine in there. Uh, we can do all varieties. We'll be launching a, a sparkling range in the next sort of 12 months, uh, but we're just focusing on, on still at the moment. And who works on the design? Because it looks pretty amazing. Um, it was designed uh, specifically for, because I mean, wine's a very traditional product. So um, you've seen wine in a can, which which does do quite well in Asia and, and places, but it's not quite um, in line with traditions of drinking wine. So the the design was was all about still adhering to tradition while being able to easily package it and be able to put it on a, on a conventional packaging line. Um, so that's we've we've got a mould that took about five years to make. Um, it's it's actually very hard to inject your mould this glass, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we've, we've got it, it's here. <laughs> uh, how did you come up with the name, Lupe Wine? Lupe is actually Latin uh, for wolf, so this, this glass in our eyes is a bit of a wolf of the wine industry because it's so different and it's also about taking your wine to new places, going you know, going going and exploring, going, you know, camping and spending as much time outdoors. So the, the wolf really uh, resonated with us and um, we also like the name Lily Bay. Uh, since you want to sort of change the wine industry, what's the hardest part when it comes to, you know, explaining people why they should use, you know, the new packages instead of the orthodox bottles? Yeah, well, I mean, part of our original strategy was actually to be purely a, a wine packaging company. Um, we, because we've, we've been in the wine industry for a long time, so we, we know a lot of the, the Australian wine industry, um, and we, we thought that it would be best to package for existing brands 
um, straight away. But as it turned out, it's um, we're a much stronger business by creating our own brand, launching it into the market and proving the concept, um, and later on rolling it out as a, as a package for other brands. So um, that was a really, really important part, the introduction, is actually um, having sort of control in a way and, and introducing it into certain areas and um, and sort of overcoming some of the hurdles that um, are associated with a new innovation. You guys based in Australia, you operate only on that market or go elsewhere as well? Well, we, yeah, so we're, we're in Australia, but we have um, the rights to the product for Asia. So it's a patented product um, and we, we really see the opportunity being in Asia because um, we're, we've, we make a lot of wine in Australia and this is a good advantage for us in that area. We can compete on an innovation level uh, rather than just on price. How many people currently work in your team? Well, I've got a, a production team in the factory, and and so that's that, that fluctuates really from you know five people to ten people. But I've got a production manager down there, and a really really good team. Um, and then I've it's we keep it we're keeping it pretty slim. I've got a, a partner in Singapore, one in Japan, one in Korea, and we've got a, a sales team of, of three in Australia. So. It's, um, I mean, that's half the, the challenge with a startup. You have to keep it lean while, um, you know, trying to make the most of um, every opportunity. So you end up being, you know, time poor, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> You're quite international. That's cool. Um, since you're an entrepreneur right now, what would you say is the best and the worst part of your job? The, hmm, that's a really good question. I guess. The best would be the flexibility. I actually really like waking up each day having no idea what's going to be thrown into my lap. Um, I really love problem solving and the challenges. Uh, also, the networking, the people that you meet, is I I find really really interesting. Other business owners and things. I guess the the only downside is that it never stops. And you're always thinking about work, but um, I don't really consider it work. It's more of a, a lifestyle for me. So I can, I mean, I can take it anywhere. There's a lot of there's a lot of travel involved, um, and yeah, I guess there's always stresses when you've got um, when you've got shareholders and employees and and those sorts of um, responsibilities. So that's. But I don't see that as a downside. Do you work pretty much every day, or you have some breaks sometimes? Uh, oh yeah, we have. We I absolutely have have breaks. It's um, it's in the Australian culture to go, you know, to have have a good weekend away here and there. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, your product does help. That's right. Love the market research. <laughs> Great, Georgia. Normally, at the end, we have a set of questions when we ask a simple question, and then you pick up one of the answers at the end. Okay. Steve Jobs or Bill Gates? Steve Jobs. iPhone, BlackBerry, or HTC? Oh, I use an iPhone. I guess BlackBerry. Tea or coffee? Well, I've just moved to tea, so I'm a tea drinker now. Going to a party or staying home? Oh, party, definitely. You didn't need to ask that one. <laughs> Mercedes or BMW? Mercedes. Fruits and vegetables or fast food? Fruit and veggie. Being married or not being married? Uh, I'm married. God believer or atheist? God. Cool. And very last question. For those people who want to start up their own company but have some doubts about it, what would you advise? I guess the most important thing is believing in yourself because you you go, there'll be a lot of people that will tell you you can't do it and that it's impossible, um, but all the, the good ideas come from crazy, you know, crazy concepts at the, at the time that um, you, you can... You just end up pursuing and um, eventually getting to market. So it's about believing yourself, surrounding yourself by the right people that believe in you, um, 
and, and just get out there and do it. Just just make it happen. Hi, my name's Georgia Beatty. I'm from Lupe Wines, especially here for Intro Up.